nonsense. Like, Saludos! Welcome to Tambora Dialogues, where we honor our rich Latina history and renativize ourselves by decolonizing all aspects of our lives. A major part of renativizing is connecting with our ancestral values, recognizing our shared responsibility to help others, not just ourselves. And so today we are joined by Milka Santana, founder of Perfecto Labs, who will share why she left New York finance world behind to honor her father's legacy by creating a school for coding, robotics, and AI for children in La República Dominicana. Milka, thank you so much for joining the Drum Circle today. Hello, hola everybody. I'm so, so, so excited to be here today. Thank you for having me. Of course, our pleasure. So um, full transparency here, Milka and I, you know, have known each other now for a little bit. Uh, her sister and I are good friends and we did a fellowship. Um, gosh, it feels like forever ago, but back in, in 2020. And Milka's sister is, is Mirta Santana and she's up in New York still, you know, do, doing the good fight. Um, and doing the good work in, in New York City for um, the homeless population. So Milka, um, big changes are often fueled by even bigger inspiration. What was your inspiration to leave the world of big finance in New York City um, and come to your hometown of Yamasa? Um, I think it was just a big storm that happened um, I usually like to talk about the biggest uh, inspiration, which was uh, my father. The reason that the school is named uh, Perfecto Labs is because his name is uh, was Perfecto Santana. Uh, my father was a, a typical Dominican man, let's just say, right? He went um, to the States in the 80s, um, left a very... I would say comfortable academic job of being math the, um, teacher and director of, of several schools uh, in the Dominican Republic. And he went to New York, you know, to do what a lot of Dominican um, mothers and fathers do, which is, you know, work three jobs while mm -hmm. Bill was going to school. So when I started Perfecto Labs, um, you know, unfortunately he passed away um, a couple of years ago. So um, I was just driven by his absolute mission through even the times that he was sick, through to to educate himself and to educate others. Mm. That's yeah. I mean that that's incredible. How. Can you share with us like a little bit more detail about your dad? Like what were what were his influences, right? You know, we you you mentioned that he was a, a mathematics professor. Um, you know, how did that come about? Where was he raised? Was he raised in, in Yamasa or was he raised, you know, elsewhere? I have to one day write a book about my father because his story is truly super inspirational. So he was raised in El Peralvillo, which is like uh, it's it's a town that is next to Yamasa. And my mm -hmm. father, you know, even the other day, a couple of months ago, I was in my house and one of his friends passed by and he told me how he, my father grew up. He grew up extremely poor. Uh, my father used to carry water for people so he could literally buy books. Mm -hmm. um, he was very much, since, since early on, he was just so yearning that, that, need to learn and to be educated extreme i mean his family even in a town even in a village what was Peral video at that time he was considered you know one of the poorest uh, person around and he managed to do that um to rise through the ranks in the dominican republic uh, of becoming a math teacher everybody in town in my and maybe not now because um because uh, now it's it's being a little bit, but the people, the older people, everybody in the town knows him as the math teacher. He taught math to everybody. Um, you go to the villages. My uncle told me, you know, in the eighties he came from New York and he brought um, uh, calculators to everybody. Could you believe that? Like somebody that would say, you know what, and which was like computers at that time, right? And go to the villages and say, you know, I'm just gonna bring calculators to everybody. 
I've been to hair salons in New York where people are like, you look like somebody. Is that, are you the daughter of Perfecto uh, <laughs> Santana? He tutored my, my daughter math. My father would just go around tutoring people math. He was just an exceptional, uh, he, he cared deeply about education and he uh, worked extremely, extremely hard um, mm -hmm. for that. It sounds like your, you know, like your dad figured out what you know Aristotle um, was trying to process, right? Which is, you know, what is the essence of life, right? And um, the essence of life is to really serve others and to do good. And it sounds like, you know, your father uh, did good for others, right? Just out of compassion and understanding that there is a shared responsibility. And it seems like you're continuing to do the same. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, being in New York and, and spending time in China and Thailand and India like you have, all of those different comforts, it's kind of hard to, you know, to, to, to give up, right, to then go back and, and, and support, um, you know, children in a community that may, that may not have all of those comforts that we may have been accustomed to. How was that transition, you know, for you, going from New York to China, to Thailand, to India, and then coming to La República Dominicana? Um, I think, was it hard? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, you have to understand my life. I always think that the reason that it is a lot easier for me to live in Yamasa is because I have had many, many different comforts in life and it has not been enough. It has not been enough for my spirit. It has not been enough for my soul. So when mm. people, you know, uh, talk about, when people talk about, you know, wow, you did this, you know, you left banking and now you're in Yamasa, I say, well, you know, it's, it's an amazing privilege that I had to be able to reach, you know, to live, I lived in London, I lived in Hong Kong, to live in all these cities, to live very comfortably. Uh, but I had to go through that to realize that it doesn't believe you could have all those things and still have like a deep hole inside of your heart. So yes, uh, it was hard as far as, you know, the water situation, the electricity situation, normal situation, it was hard, I have stories for days, but at the end of the day, it, it's been probably the easiest decision that I that I've been that I that I've done. And uh, I think you know to give more details, uh, it's not so much about the change of you know of the everyday needs. It's about when you have something in mind. There's como it's like if you put a bunch of challenges in front and you almost don't see them because you're so zoomed in. I'm, I was so zoomed in in those kids when I went to Yamasa in 2020 that all the other, you know, the heat and everything else just seemed like smaller things to the big mission that I have in life, which is to educate um, children of color and right now Dominican children. I Thank you, Milka. I, I really love that. Um, you know, because because I too, as you know, made the transition to the Dominican into the Dominican Republic. Um, you know, last year, and you know, one of the one of the questions that I was asked is the same question I was I you know I asked you, and it was just like no, like I I I don't miss any of it because I was so centered on, you know, coming here to to my land to my people to you know my culture and giving that opportunity to my kids and figuring out okay todo lo que yo aprendí everything that i learned in my travels in the world como lo puedo aplicar aquí like how can i apply it here how can i you know uplift uh my community right because i had the privilege of access and and everything else that that came with like an education and you know the the american dream but my american dream is actually here in la república dominicana Hey, right. oh, I love that. <laughs> I, I, I feel the same way. Exactly. Y sí, y se, y se nota, se nota, se nota. So tell me a little bit about, you know, the children that, you know, you, you, you care for and you encourage as part of your work at Perfecto Labs. 
So just to give you a bit of background, in 2020, I went and I started um, with seven children, and now we have um, 70 children. Wow. Uh, the, and, and the waiting list is huge, huge. We get parents all the time knocking on our doors, especially now that we've gotten, every time that we get some press in the Dominican Republic, there's, uh, there's probably, I don't know, the waiting list is definitely a lot larger than what we have right now, maybe a couple of hundred parents. Wow. The children are um, the children are extraordinary. Um, they are smart and they want something huge for themselves. Um, I think that we don't realize that when, for example, when I was in Jamasa, I left Jamasa when I was 10 years old. You know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have um, a lot of the things that we, they, they have now. So they see the world outside. Um, and they realize that they, you know, they want some of those things. Um, a lot of them come from very far. They're between the ages of 10 and, um, and 16. Um, and uh, they, we, I have, I'm thinking of a little girl right now. Uh, she is, you know, you would see her and she's tall. You would think that she's, you know, like a 17 year old and she's 13 years old. And she comes from um, very, very far. So her parents bought her a, a motor, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a 13-year-old riding a motor to be able to go to the school. Uh -huh. from, you know, riding it for like 30, 30 minutes. It's, it's just, and I have stories like that. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. Their ability to learn to code in an environment that it's just like, it's almost like living in a village, it's, it's beyond me. It, it makes me feel uh, so inspired uh, to, to be able to, to do more. And tell me, what is what is the structure like? You know, are they coming to you like after school? Are they coming to you in the mornings? Um, you know, how many, like, how many teachers are there? Is it you? Like, how are you coordinating all of these things? Um, so I, when I went to Yamasa in 2020, it was me by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yo cogí two, 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 three little robots, um, and I brought them to Yamasa and I just started in the, in the second floor of my, of my house. Now we have a team, we have a team of about, it keeps growing. The actual teachers are five, but then we have a team of like, I think almost 10 people right now. Okay. Um, they go to school um, Monday. The schools open Monday through Thursday, and then Saturday. So um, it's at an after, after school program right now um, because they go to school now from uh, or to perfecto last from four to six thirty, and then during the weekend um, it is open the whole day. Mm -hmm. because the coding teachers come from Santo Domingo during the weekends. Um, and, um, and they take not only coding and robotics, but they also take English and, and math. Uh, next year, we are trying to speak with schools because we need more hours. So um, ultimately, what I want to build, and we could talk about that later, but I want to be a full-time school that we have them there from... Um, from you know 8 a.m to to 2 p.m oh that's that's that would be fabulous yeah so then you would in, incorporate all other academics into into the school in yes. addition to what you're doing yeah but focus i really do believe that sometimes it you know we could talk for it you know you have how many two boys two boys yeah uh Obviously, I come from banking, but I have a lot of opinions around education. And one of them is that I think that the, the education system tries to focus on too many things at the same time instead of just zoom in into one thing. So our thing would be, you know, technology and then allow kids to realize uh, their what I call their superpower. So if your superpower is not technology, that's fine. But you have to make sure that you're the absolute best on that superpower. So that's the idea. 
Right. So, you know, um, what I've obviously, as you know, uh, two kids here in, in the Dominican Republic and, um, like you said, there's, there's, there's a lot coming, coming at the kids and, you know, there's, there's a, a, a lot of structure, right? There's a, a lot of structure in terms of, um, you know, rules about, you know, authority, et cetera. It's very different from like back in New York city where, you know, there's a, there's the teacher and then you, you don't challenge the teacher's thinking. You just listen to your authority. The way I was raised aquí en la República Dominicana, it's like, no, you ask a question. Like if you feel like you're not understanding or you feel that maybe there's an error, you you ask the question. And so I'm, I'm curious if like, if you're, you're trying as part of like, you know, the curriculum incorporating some of that independent, independent thinking um, and framing for, for the kids, like you have your voice, you, you have an ability to be independent, you have an opinion, we want you to, you to use it and to question everything that comes at you. Is that something that you all are trying oh, to yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um The education in, in not only the, I, I actually disagree slightly with you, I think that this is not a Dominican Republic thing. I think this is a world thing. I think the education yeah. system is created in some ways to create shifts, like just people that just follow, right? Um, not to create thinking, you know, revolutionary beings that are about to, you know, destroy, destroy the status quo, which is what I want to create. So uh, our school is quite different. Um, we we focus on um, doing right, so not there is not a lot of like sitting down listening to the teacher. There, there has to be some of that, but uh, most of it is always doing, always doing with the robots, right? That's why I love uh, technology because it's never about just sitting down there. It's always using your hands and then using technology to be able in, to to connect those two, right? Even in math classes, we have a mathematics lab where we do not, it's a room full of different math, math objects where you do not use um, numbers and you, you, you have all these objects to use math. But to your point, I think that, you know, I'm always thinking of things in order to, to, we don't have a lot of rules to make sure that um, the kids are, it's, it's more of a creative process, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we're doing, just to answer your question more specifically, is that, so we are starting actually like a podcast, but this podcast is more about a, letting kids um, express themselves um, and, uh, and their ideas. What do they think about school? What do they think about a school lunch? What do they think about the fact that in the Dominican Republic, wearing your curly hair out in schools, I don't know if you know this, Erasma, but in the Dominican Republic, wearing your curly hair out in school is not following the rules. You could have a little, um, you know, um, more European looking girl that has straight hair and she could wear her hair down. You have somebody like us with a lot of hair it is not allowed. You have to pick it up. Um, how do they feel about the uniform? How do they feel about the fact that every single year they are, they're taking to El Aquario? How do they feel about so many different things that I want to, you know, for them to um, speak their minds um, right. through, through it? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, what, that, but that's the, the difference, right? Um, the dichotomy, right, between like the public school system that I've noticed in La República Dominicana and then the private school system, right? So when, you know, when we arrived and we were looking for schools for our boys, we visited quite a few, both public and, and private. And in the public schools, which are really centered, you know, around the Catholic kind of like infrastructure and, and teachings, right, and rules, it was very, very strict. Um, you know, you're wearing uniforms, you're, you have to dress a certain way. Boys have to cut their hair really, really short. And as, see, yo, yo tengo mi, 
my curls, mis rizos, mi colochos, whatever you want to call them, you know, and so do my boys. And so when they asked the question, I was just like, you know, ask whatever question you want. And they asked the question, you know, in one of the, in one of the um, public schools, you know, how are, are we allowed to wear our hair the way, natural, the way it is? And they said, well, no, you have to cut it. And then, you know, we went to a, a private school that they ended up going to and they asked a question there. Are we allowed to wear our hair the way we want to? And they were like, you're an individual. You wear your hair however you want. Oh, wow. And so they're like, afterwards, we, you know, we all convened and we had a conversation. They were like, yeah, we're going to go to this school. Yeah. They told us they're okay with us being who we are, not that other school. So yeah. I love, I love the fact that you're, you're, you're doing that, that you're, you're reframing, you're reshaping what education really should be for kids. It should be freedom. It should be, you know, an ability to ask questions. It's an ability to shape even their own learning. Um, and the fact that you're using all these different tools to, to learn math, because you don't have to learn math just by, you know, looking at a blackboard um, and then, okay, following, you know, the, the structure, but it's actually like interactive and that's fabulous because then it becomes part of your everyday and you don't get the question that I get, how is math going to help me, you know, in the future? And I was like, it's connected to everything, right? But you're, you're showing the kids and that's so important. I love that. Thank you. Es tan importante. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about like, you know, you, you mentioned that you're, you're thinking about adding like different facets to, to your programming. And, you know, you were often quoted as saying that coding and robotics are, are the future. So what experiences have shaped your thinking in, in that respect? I think that, you know, I come from a, a background in finance and then started teaching myself um, to code on my own and realize the amazing opportunity that coding has, right? Like you could take any child from any village, uh, town, anywhere in the world and teach them to code and you have created a self-sufficient human. Uh, you know, I, I am in the background. There's there's some nonprofits that you know uh, that teach children, you know, that feed children. I have never been of, of that mentality, you know. Of course, they're necessary, but my thing is not about that. My thing is about how um, one. I give you a skill, so technology is extremely important. I give you a skill, coding. You learn it, and you for the rest of your life, you have a as of now, you have a guaranteed job, basically. Because we're human beings and we need to um, be able to know how to feed ourselves. Right. Um, but then aside from that is, you know, coding by itself doesn't do, doesn't do anything. <laughs> Ultimately, um, the, the big idea with uh, Perfecto Labs is to, to, to create um, kids that have open open minds, right? To create kids that know themselves, that know where they come from, and that know that they are, they have a limitless, what I call a limitless mentality, which is um, that they know that they could do whatever, whatever they want. Uh, we just use technology as a, <clears throat> as an avenue to get us there, as just as you could use anything else, just as you could use environmental studies, just as you could use anything else, but we just use coding because I do really, really feel that um, it's just, I wouldn't say the easiest way because learning to code is certainly not easy, but yeah. it's a very efficient word that, uh, way that they could just literally, within a couple of years, transform their, their lives and the lives of the entire family. Mm, I love that. And Milka, how are you uh incorporating because you mentioned that you're also they're also learning english right so um and potentially other foreign languages so how are you enhancing that learning around you know let's say ai and 3d printing and robotics and coding with like the foreign languages well right now they're like obviously coding um so the way that coding works is that it is in english so okay all the like conditional statements it's always like if something happens, it pecs then so they have to learn um the the, the coding uh they, they have to learn english uh, mm. or at least those words 
to uh, learn coding. We okay. have a separate um, we have a separate class for, for that is an English class. English class is a program that we have. We call it like an immersion program. It's not a regular English class. Uh, we really believe that kids learn uh, language through their interests. So we just teach them. We just show them a lot of um, uh, series, a lot of uh, movies. They have a reading room that they sit down, four of them, and then they talk. Uh, they they have uh, somebody read to them because we want to make sure that they understand the beauty of reading. Um, they also have a person, uh, a teacher that uh, that is they're all over the world and they basically um, talk to them through Zoom in groups of four again. They uh, they talk to them. Uh, they have conversations for thirty minutes uh, a day. Uh, so basically, we just our school is not really like a, a regular school that you know kids go here, a, a group of thirty kids go there, a group of thirty kids there. It's mainly like a center where kids, uh, depending on a specific schedule, take different classes. So some kids will be taking uh, in a math lab. Uh, there's four kids there talking uh, to the tutor. There's some kids there in the reading room, um, or we call it the reading lounge. Um, there's some kids playing with with math, right? So that's that's the idea to create more of like um, open way of uh, of of developing kids' own um, own curiosity. That's fabulous. And tell me, how how are you? How are you supporting all of this work that's happening in, in Yamasa, in, in Perfecto Lab? <laughs> uh, we so want our audience to know so that they can, mire, let's dig deep into our pockets, folks. Yeah, this is, this yes, is about the yes, yes, let's, let's go. Dig, let's dig deep. Uh, <laughs> so we have a GoFundMe page. Uh, I probably, you know, in GoFundMe, if you go Perfecto Labs, you'll find it. Uh, we managed to raise this year, the program is eight months. Um, we managed to raise about uh, a 20 K or so. Um, next year's budget is bigger, a lot bigger. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but basically it's a combination of, um, uh, the money that we have raised. Uh, I just did the expenses and I'm very open about it. Uh, we have, ex we have, um, the program so far this year is about uh, 40K in expenses. 20K comes from mainly Dominicans in New York, and then 20K comes from me. So I have a full-time job, and I basically um, finance a lot of it. Okay, okay. But your hope is that, you know, you would eventually find, um, you know, not find, but be able to expand the, the stream, right? Uh, the flow of support that comes to you, hopefully from, you know, the government here. Are you listening? Están escuchando, gobierno dominicano, vamos. Um, so, apoyo de la República Dominicana directamente del gobierno. Um, but also, yeah, like, you know, like Dominicans back in the States who understand, you know, the importance of this and, and want to do good in the world. And everybody else that's listening that wants to do good in the world, this is definitely a, a you know, a powerful investment. Um, so that's great. So that's great. So this is an opportunity for us to to share more about about you, your work, um, what you're doing at Perfecto Labs, and hopefully connect more people to it and get some more support. Um, so thank you for for sharing that. You know, one of the things that we we talk about as part of Tambora Dialogues is as I mentioned at the beginning, is connecting to our ancestral values, right? So the values of, you know, shared responsibility, the values of family, uh, the values of compassion. You know, it's interesting. I read, um, gosh, it's been maybe a, a year ago. I read the, you know, there's such a thing as a, the Gallup has like an emotional survey, like happiness survey that they do every year. And they basically, you know, ask, people in, in different countries all around the world about their level of happiness and, and joy. And not surprisingly, United States is not in the top 10 or the top 20 or the top 30, but many Latin American countries are in the top 10. And the reason for that is because of how we center 
you know, compassion, um, you know, and acts of love for, for each other. And this is definitely, you know, what you're doing is, a, is an act of love. And so I want to, I want to ask you before, before we close, like, what is your vision? And you mentioned a little bit of this, you know, for Perfecto Labs, but what is your, your ultimate vision for, for the lab? And how can we at Tambora and those of us listening, you know, support this effort? So the program has two visions. The first one is to create the best um, uh, school in the Dominican Republic. And the second one is uh, to expand in a digital way, which we are already doing it, uh, to create a um, coding for Spanish speaking kids uh, in the Dominican Republic and throughout Latin America. Um, uh, the first one, I think it's very important to me and, you know, Erasma and everybody that's listening, you're welcome to contact me, uh, milka at perfectolabs.org, and, um, and, and come to visit the school. Because you think about this little school in Yamasa, oh, how nice, she's helping, um, she's helping some poor kids. Uh, our school is um, designed very, very different. We have... Um, robots uh, that are worth $400 each. We have 3D printers, we have projectors. Every single room in our classroom um, has an AC. Uh, and the school itself has a bunch of toys and inter ping pong table. It's an extremely revolutionary idea for Jamasa, for Monte Plata, and even for the Dominican Republic. So. But we're just getting started, right? So my vision for the program is to develop that. We're building a super, you know, technology center in the second floor that's going to be open. Um, and I really want Perfecto Labs to become the best school. And it's very important for that to be the best school because I am sick and tired of the best schools to be, you know, only for the kids that, that have the resources, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my main priority right now. And then aside from that, like I said, we're working with a team to uh, to develop our, our website and to create a platform where children all over uh, and teachers as well could be trained in, uh, in learning to code in Spanish. So I, I wanted to ask you, Milka, you know, um, as part of your vision, what do you think about connecting students uh, like your students with other um, schools that are also focusing on um, on coding, right? And and AI and and all of the things that you're you're doing. Have you thought about that kind of like creating this global, you know, citizen and um, collaboration for for your students? Yeah, absolutely. Um, would you say it's, uh, schools in the Dominican Republic or abroad or all over the world? I'm thinking like, you know, abroad, right? So, yeah. you know, there are lots of schools, you know, like, you know, the Girls That Code back in, in New York City that are, are doing some wonderful work and like connecting, you know, you know, children from on both sides to kind of like, you know, do some shared learning and do some shared creation and, you know, an opportunity to to experience and have a, you know, different perspectives. I think that would be wonderful. I think that one of the challenges with that is uh, <clears throat> uh, language. So our kids mm -hmm. just started taking English, you know, uh, in February as part of the program. So I think as their English level develops, uh, that would be wonderful. But also we could actually take maybe a program, you know, uh, I know that there's a program in Boston, for example, that has a bunch of Dominican kids that are learning to code um, for them to like kind of share the experience. Um, and then, you know, also for them to be able to um, speak in Spanish, because right now it's really hard if the kids don't speak Spanish. Um, yeah. yeah, no, okay, that's, yeah, that's terrific. Amazing. Milka, thank you so much. You know, one one question um, that that just popped up uh, for me, and I'm sure the the team and people listening is, you know, in this in this every day that you're doing with the children um, in Yamasa, do you? I'm sure you do, but we I'm sure everybody wants to hear from you. Do you see your your father? Do you see your your father's 
you know, yearning for learning um, in the in the children um, that you that you encourage every day. I see my father all the time. <laughs> I yeah. see him all the time. I see him in that little girl that the other day, literally, she it was raining so much, and she sent me through WhatsApp. She sent me the picture of the of the motorcycle uh, that was that had a bunch of mud. And, and she was like, Profe, I can't go to school today. This is why, because, you know, it's, it's just we weren't able to get there, right? Yeah. Like, I see him there, and I see him every single student um, that that looks like they really, really want to learn. You know, that type of student that is, like, always asking. But we have a bunch of them. <laughs> um, I, I see him in, 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 um, in the school itself and in all... Um, in all the dreams of, of the of the kids of Perfecto Labs and of every Dominican child. Mm, thank you. Milka, thank you so much for, for joining our circle today. Uh, thank you for, you know, continuing to inspire all of those young people and, and all of us. Um, to all of you watching or listening, I leave you with a quote from the Dalai Lama, which is, it's not enough to be compassionate, you must act. So we encourage you to, to act, to center our collective responsibility and our sense of community to help all of those um, around us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Milka, again. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or just leave us a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram at Tambora Dialogues and on Twitter at Tambora Dialogues number one. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time in the drum circle. Take care, everybody.